The front kick is one of the most common techniques in all fighting styles, so I invested heavily in learning how to catch front kicks and throw people on the floor. Here's how you do it. It's Ramsey Dewey over here in Shanghai, China at the Extreme Fight Club. Here with my assistant, Xiao. And a lot of you have asked me to break down the golf swing single leg finish, which consequently is also a, a Tai Chi movement. Looks kind of like this if you do it very slowly. But, but what that is, first of all, here, front kick me. Tai Chi isn't real, get over it. <laughs> it's, it's catching, throw a real front kick at me. <laughs> okay, so I've caught the kick. I'm not using my fingers, I'm using my wrists. So imagine you're wearing boxing gloves, because you can do this in boxing gloves. I first learned this throw 12 years ago from a former Chinese national sanda champion, student of Tai Chi master Wu Dao Shui. But this technique is not unique to Chinese martial arts. You'll see it in freestyle wrestling, other grappling arts, and Muay Thai as well. Notice I've caught with my wrist right here. Come on over here, get a close-up of my hand. So I'm not holding on with my fingers, I'm holding with my wrist, and the wrist over the top here, and I'm squeezing tight, and holding this against my abdomen. So I will receive the kick, and I will scoop my hips back, like this. Here, kick again, get a close-up here. Okay, so I displace that energy going down and back. So again, so we don't actually have to catch a kick to do this technique, but you do get style points for it. The whole technique, kick, okay, here, let's do that a few times, kick, okay, again, kick, Does this work with side kicks? Yes, sort of. Catching a side kick is essentially the same body mechanic, catch with the wrists, but you gotta squeeze harder. And here's why. If, here, hold, hold your leg up this way. Okay, his foot's up this way. This is easier to catch. There's this big, long handle, his foot. Now I'll turn it into a side kick. Now it becomes more slippery, so if I don't have a tight grip, it might slide out. So I've gotta squeeze it extra hard. So here, throw some side kicks at me. So yes, I'm gripping with the wrist, same sort of thing. In fact, I got a video clip of me catching a side kick live right here. But finishing a takedown on the side kick is gonna be a little bit different. Here, throw the side kick. So if I catch this, the way I'm probably gonna take him down is elevate the hip that way. That's when it, going to be one of the easier ways to do it. The golf swing takedown is going to work best if his legs are parallel rather than turned in or turned out, right? Now, we don't have to wait for him to throw a kick. I can set this up from inside a clinch. I grab a single leg, and I got that same thing right here, right? Going to, for an ankle pick, right? or I shoot in on a single and I'm trying to run the pipe or something, but Chow's jumping away from me, cross-facing, making it difficult, straightening out this leg. All right, so I straighten it and I finish. Now, here are the mechanics of the, of the actual finish. So I get a hold of the leg, either he throws a kick or I pick it up one way or the other. I pull to straighten this out. If his leg is bent, I'm gonna have a hard time getting the golf swing finish. I can go for all kinds of other finishes. Boom, this one, for example, right? But if it's straight, boom, this is ideal. That's why catching a kick is a great time to go for this takedown. But I'm gonna swing the leg up high, very high, and then drag it down very low. Up high, down low. Here, let's do that again right here. Maybe it's, oh, it's okay. Again. Oh. So swing it up high, drag it down low. And I got a pull. And I'm bringing myself very low. I'm bowing down. Right? I'm hinging at the hip right here. So again, if you see the old people in the park doing Tai Chi, they're hinging 
very low. It's, it's not so much a leg movement, it's not a squat, it's not a sumo squat, it's a hinge from the hips. It's like a bow, All right? And I drag that down low, okay? But wait, there's more. We can use this as a guard pass. Let's say I put Xiao on the floor. Huh. He's already on the ground, but he's potentially dangerous. He might get up, he might up kick me, something like that. Oh, right? I need to pass his guard. I've got a hold of this leg, so what do I do? Same movement. Right? Or, here, come, come on down to the floor here. So he's got these squirrely legs. Whatever you do, fighting somebody from the guard, do not look down at them. You'll get knocked out, right? Somebody asked me a while back, why don't we see more upkick knockouts in the UFC? There have only been two upkick knockouts in UFC history. Only two. And here's why. It's because UFC fighters are smarter than that. If I look down at the guy, I've broken my posture, I brought my face close enough to get knocked out. Guys at the highest level of MMA will not do this. They just won't. They'll keep their head back, lean him back a little bit. Now Xiao might get my body, he might get my legs, he can axe kick, he can up kick, he can do all these things, but he's not gonna get my head. There are some poofs out there on the internet telling you that you can't use up kicks in sparring. Nonsense. Use control in sparring. If you don't have control, don't spar. Otherwise, pay attention. To hit an upright vertical opponent, use a round kick like this rather than a front kick because it won't reach. Unless he's leaning forward, which I was about to do right here where I up kick his body. I could have easily reached the head from this position. But we're being good sparring partners. So let's recap. This position with my head and body leaning forward will get me knocked out by an up kick. However, this position, with my head leaning slightly back, is safe from an up kick. Now, while he's trying, look at this. I brought my hip close to his hip. His hips are elevated. Now I can separate one of these, drag it out here, swing it up, pull it down, keep a hold of that leg until I pass the guard. He's down, I'm up, I move my hips closer, my head farther away, I isolate a leg, pull it out, out, in, drag. So it's, it's just a fancy leg drag is what that is. Again, catch this ankle, we put him on the floor, I've got the leg straight, the same motion to pass the guard, get my head far away, two-handed grip, a baseball bat grip, two C grips right there. Swing it out, pull it down and in, I keep this hand here until I've successfully moved into knee mount. Why? Because it's a frame. If I don't have that hand here, if I just fling it like, whoa, there you go, Shao. Look, he's right back. Okay. So I keep this. He tries to regard. Can you? Not unless he gets this leg free and independent of this hand. All right. Thank you for watching. Now get out there and train. Do you ever have trouble landing your jab? Sure. We all do. So what are you going to do about it? I'll tell you what. You get yourself a rash guard with a camouflage left sleeve so he will never see it coming. My left hand is now virtually invisible. Can't see that, can you, Shell? No, where's the left hand? I know, right? Camouflage sleeves from xmarshall.com. Go check them out. They'll never see you coming.